Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博远。Journalists in the West try desperately to make China's political stability look evil, as political chaos in the UK makes young Brits tired of electoral democracy. Western China watchers poke fun after CPC newspapers share news of Xi's third term, but have they forgotten their own media? And a Cantonese-speaking cop in Manchester puts an end to Hong Kong protesters' foul behaviour. What the peaceful protesters did next won't shock you. This is reports on China Quick Three. Let's start counting down. Mainstream media hacks in the West are desperately trying to take the shine off China's political system, as more and more young people grow tired of the political chaos in Western countries. The BBC has asked, "Is political chaos the UK's new normal?" As Britain sees its third prime minister in less than two months, the highest turnover of PMs in nearly a hundred years. This comes in stark contrast to the recent re-election of the General Secretary of the CPC, which received vast international attention, which was able to highlight clearly the differences between the rational, grown-up, and respectful leadership style of China and the infantile, chaotic, embarrassing style of the West. Dominic Lawson from the Sunday Times is getting so worried that the headline of his recent piece sounds more like a stern, fatherly telling off for young people in the UK. Our chaos is healthier than China's harmony, he grumbles, before mentioning a recent poll taken there, which asked 8,000 people if they'd prefer the UK was run by a strong leader who doesn't have to bother with elections. Eek. A massive 46% said yes, but what scared Dominic and others like him the most is that the vast majority of 18 to 34-year-olds, 61%, agreed. He notes that the poll was taken before trust disintegrated, meaning that the percentage might very well be higher now. Symbolic of the desperation many Western oligarchs are feeling now, Dominic goes on to rant and rave, using all of the typical anti-China tropes, scaremongering, and disinformation, to try and persuade the UK's young people that their desperate struggles today and the system that got them into this mess are somehow worth keeping. Some self-proclaimed Western China experts, who literally prove daily how ill-fitting that title is. Have been poking fun at the fact that a bunch of Chinese newspapers shared the same front cover after Xi Jinping was elected for a third term as General Secretary of the Communist Party of China. The thing they don't realise is that the newspapers they cited are all official CPC newspapers from around the country. Not that they would ever know that. Now, why would the party's official newspapers, designed almost exclusively for reading by party members, Need to waste time designing different covers to tell the world's biggest news story of that day. Again, those newspapers are official party newspapers. Other newspapers across China have completely different covers, obviously, including my very own Shanghai Daily. Here's our cover from the 24th. But the real funny part of it is that Western newspapers follow much the same rulebook, except they do it while pretending they're free to use whatever content they want. Keep in mind that the vast majority of mainstream media in the West is run by a small group of billionaires. Take a look at this spread of U.S. newspapers after Joe Biden became president, and check out these front covers after the U.K. recently welcomed their new prime minister, the third in just a few weeks. So, what's the difference? Well, the CPC newspapers you saw are all directly under the control of the Communist Party of China. They don't claim to be independent in any way, shape, or form. Basically, you know what you're getting. While these U.S. and U.K. newspapers all printed extremely similar content, while lying to the public and pretending that they're somehow independent. So, which one seems scarier to you? Lastly, today, a Cantonese-speaking police officer in Manchester, England, has become the victim of online threats and doxing. After telling anti-China rioters from Hong Kong that if they continue using foul language, they risk being arrested. Let's take a look. What the police officer said there was completely fair. It is an offence in the UK under Section 5 of the Public Order Act to use threatening or abusive words in public. 
The policeman was then subject to online threats from the Hong Kong protesters who were asking for his personal information to be shared. Now, if the way those protesters treated Hong Kong police during the riots is anything to go by, this is not a good thing. Some of the protesters claimed they were just trying to find out the officer's badge number so they could make a complaint, while others called him pro-CCP for enforcing UK laws and keeping the mob from becoming unruly. It seems they truly will never learn. A quick bonus for today, you guys. CNN reporter Selena Wang, who I gave a C- to in the last episode for her story about the man wearing 27 hazmat suits in protest against China's COVID-0 policy, has blocked me on Twitter. Up until recently, she was following me, but it seems my criticisms were a bit much, and I was sent to the naughty room. How sad. Well, that's it for today, you guys. Do you think UK youth are right to be tired of their political system? How do you think Chinese media and Western media differ? And what do you think of those Hong Kong protesters in Manchester? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you all next time. Bye-bye.